Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the Python temp file module. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the most useful parts of it, uh, as well as the stuff that you should usually stay away from, but occasionally you'll need. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so first, if you want to get the documentation yourself, um, you can find it on <laughs> python.org. Uh, I just Google, I usually Google Python 3 and then module names. So for this, I Googled Python 3 temp file, and that's how I got to this. Um, 3 to make sure that you don't get the outdated Python 2 docs that Google really likes to give you for whatever reason. Um, but we're going to be walking through um, a few of these types today. I'm going to start with temporary directory because it's the most straightforward. It has the least caveats and um, it just kind of works. Note that these capitalized classes um, are not exactly classes because they're implemented using functions. But anyway, uh, they are context managers and we're going to use them like context managers. Uh, I did another video on context managers. I'll link that in the description. Basically, it means we're going to be using them with the with statement. All right, and what tempfile allows you to do, the, the TLDR tempfile is it allows you to create temporarily available files and directories uh, that you might need as intermediates while processing, or maybe you want to you know, clone a repo in a temporary directory, do some stuff to it, and then delete that temporary directory or stuff like that. Um, it, you know, it lets you have temporary on disk storage as opposed to hard coding pads, which can be a security problem um, or, you know, writing stuff that never gets deleted, <laughs> which you can run out of disk pretty easily there. Um, so temp file is a, a nice way to handle those sorts of things. But anyway, let's jump into it. We'll go over each of these functions. I'm going to skip spooled temporary file because it's very, very specific in its use case. Uh, but we'll, I guess I'll talk briefly about it, but we won't do any examples. Um, so we're going to start with temporary directory. So uh, the way that you use this is uh, first we have to import temp file, of course. Um, Let's just make a main function just so we're doing everything <laughs> correctly. <laughs> main raise system exit main. So I'm, I'm trying out this new thing. I'm trying to make it a thing where instead of doing exit main, I do raise system exit main. Uh, does the same thing, but doesn't require an import or doesn't require a site. But <laughs> I'm trying to push that. We'll see if it becomes a thing. Anyway. With temp file dot temporary temporary directory as tempter. So what this is going to do is it's going to make a temporary directory and then give us a string. And this string is the path to that temporary directory. So if we do just print tempter here and we run this, you'll see that it printed this directory. Now, if we try and look at this directory, you'll see that it no longer exists. Um, and it does actually exist in here. So if we put a breakpoint here, I do breakpoint pass because there's a bug in Python where, well, I, I can show you the bug actually. Um, we don't put pass there. Uh, it puts us at the exit of the context manager of temporary directory, which is probably not what we want. Um, for instance, tempter not in scope here. Uh, we really want to look at this bit here. You can't actually step up and get back to it, but I don't know why it does that. Really annoying, so I usually do breakpoint pass. Um, but if we look at tempter now, we are still in the context manager and we can see that that directory does exist. And as soon as we continue this, uh, um, you'll see that it no longer exists because we didn't, we didn't get a directory entry back. Uh, you can see there's no temp in here at all. Cool. So that's temporary directory, creates a temporary directory. There are a few options and these options will be used throughout all of these functions. Um, the first is suffix uh, that allows you to change the name specifically. So if you wanted the temporary directory, we'll just get rid of the breakpoint, uh, suffix equals wet, for instance. If you wanted your uh, temporary directory to end in a particular thing, this is more useful for files, which we'll get to later. Uh, if you want like a particular file extension, although it also works for temporary directory. There's also prefix. Uh, this changes the name here. I actually use the prefix in pre-commit to give uh, specific names inside this cache here. So you can see these all start with repo. These were all created with the temporary directory. Um, well, actually, I don't use the context manager. I use the other un unsafer form that we'll look at later. Um, but you can change 
we can change what the um, what the directory starts with. Uh, and the last is dir, and dir lets us configure where it gets created. So again, like these got created in a very specific directory. By default, it's going to get created in slash temp, uh, but you can do whatever directory you want. So if we do this, you can see that it created it directly in our current working directory. Uh, and this can be useful if you want to like control where the temporary directory is, or maybe you need it to be on the same file system. For instance, if you're doing a rename, you need to be on the same file system, so you might make a directory relative to the target or something like that. And so that's what dir is useful for. <clears throat> but basically, it creates the temporary directory, and then when it's done with it, it deletes it. Uh, depending on the Python version, you can actually delete this yourself. So maybe you need to like run this context manager, get a temporary directory, and either move it somewhere or remove it. Um, and I think in the latest version of Python, yeah, you can see that it, it no longer, in, well, 3.8, it no longer uh, errors. I believe in 3.6, 3.6, uh, that was weird. Yeah, in 3.6, it errors. So you have to be careful about removing or moving this directory around. Uh, but I believe in 3.8, they changed it so that it no longer errors. Yeah, so you can see 3.6 and 3.7 both errored uh, when I removed it there. Cool, okay, so that's temporary directory. It creates directories for you. Uh, they live for the scope of this with block, um, and that's, yeah, that's what it does. It does what it says on the tin. Uh, next, we'll move to named temporary file, uh, or I guess we can move to temporary file next. Uh, <laughs> named temporary file and temporary file work basically the same. The main difference between the two is, and, and they create files instead of directories. The main difference between the two is Named direct or named named temporary file uh, exists on the file system, and you can pass that file name to other stuff to do it. Uh, whereas temporary file does not necessarily end up on the file system, depending on the platform. Uh, on Linux, it does not. On Windows, it may, or other platforms, it may, um, because they don't have the same idea of file descriptors as Linux does. So let's do that next. Um, so with uh, temporary file and in the last one it returned a string in this case it's actually going to return us a file like object and it's going to be opened automatically uh, so if we run this t.py you'll see that we get a buffered random <clears throat> which is uh, a temporary file <laughs> type uh, and if we go to temporary file yeah uh, so temporary file has a few more mo uh, options than temporary directory. The first is mode and buffering and encoding and new line. Uh, these are all options to files. So you know, mode changes whether it's going to be a binary file or a text file. Um, buffering changes whether it's right through or not. Uh, encoding changes if it's a text file, whether it's going to be uh, you know, what the encoding of the underlying binary stream is. And new line changes how reading and writing of the, the file works. And these are these are the same as for open. So if you look at the docs for open, you can figure out what each of these do. Um, one kind of gotcha with temporary file is it defaults to binary mode. This feels a little bit weird to me. Like it's different than all of the other functions. Like it's different than open, um, but it's something to look out for. So make sure like if you're if you're doing Text files, you'll change mode. You'll set mode equals uh, I guess if we do temp file dot write foo, um, and if you use mode equals w, then you can do. Uh, well, let me show it. Let me show it crashing first, of course. Uh, so you can see that it requires a binary stream by default. Uh, but if we do mode equals w, then we can write to it like a text file. Um, and it actually changed the type here, so you can see. When we were in mode W, we got IO text or text IO wrapper. And this is similar to what Open does as well. Um, now, the one ca caveat with temporary file is it does not exist on disk in all cases. Uh, this temp file does have a name attribute, trans temp file dot name. Um, but for um, for uh, temporary file, it's just three, which is actually the file descriptor number. Uh, on other platforms, it may have a name and it may exist, but you should not depend on that unless you're using named temporary file, uh, which we'll get to next. 
and name temporary file forces it to be on disk. But otherwise, it's identical to temporary file. So in this case, uh, it wrote out this particular file path here, and you can use that file path in other uh, other calls. So you can write to this text file and then maybe call, oh, let's do cat, for instance, import subprocess. And I'm gonna show you another caveat here. <laughs> Send process dot check call cat temp file dot name. So we're just gonna sh uh, shell out to cat and write the contents of this file, which should contain foo. Let's see if we run this, it printed nothing. And that is because these files by default are buffered. So you need to make sure that you flush whatever contents you're writing to the file such that it can show up on disk. So if you do temp file dot flush, and this is, you know, more of a problem on Windows, I've, I find, as you can see that we got through there, uh, than on Linux. Um, you'll also, I think it also flushes if you have a new line. Oh, I guess not. Hmm. Anyway, uh, you can see that now that we have put this flush here, it has forced the contents to be synchronized to disk, and then you get this here. Now, I find this to be, I, I forget this a lot, and sometimes it just works due to buffering and other stuff. Uh, so I don't like using the temporary file context managers. Um, I, what I usually do is I just use temporary directory and then write a file normally using open inside of the temporary directory. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about this fiddly stuff. It is slightly less efficient to make a directory and then a file in it, but I find the code ends up being cleaner and you don't have to worry about this weirdness here. I think also on Windows, you have to like make sure you close the file too. So if you need to like move the file around, you need to both flush and then close. Uh, is that correct? Does that not cause this to get deleted? Oh, it does cause it to get deleted. Uh, I guess you just need to flush then. <laughs> but on, on Windows, like if you made a temporary file and then you needed to move it, this file still has this, or this process still has this open and Windows is very particular about processes owning files. So um, that's another place where temporary file or name temporary file uh, might not cut it. But if you did temporary directory and then a file inside of it, it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so those are the three like most common things you're going to use in the temp file directory. There's also spooled temporary file. And this is mostly intended for logging. Uh, it has the, the TLDR of it is it has a minimum size and after it reaches that particular size, it will write the file to disk or, or synchronize its contents to disk. And then you can roll it over. It has this special rollover method. Um, and so this is intended to you know, give you a log rotation sort of thing. But I've literally never used this, so I don't know how quite useful it is. Um, and lastly, I wanna talk about the two other functions that are in the temp file uh, module. There are actually three. Um, but the or three or four or five, uh, but the other ones you should probably never use. And those are make s temp. Um, I believe the s stands for secure, which is a little silly, but um, we'll see make temp later and the explanation for why, I guess. Uh, so make s temp is the thing that backs name temporary file and temporary file. It is the, it's going to create a temporary file and then it's going to return back a, I think it's a file descriptor in the open file, which is a little bit, it's a little bit clunky to use. So it's uh, not super recommended, but also it's not a context manager, so it won't clean up the files for you. So if you use this, it'll leave stuff around on disk, which is not, you know, not, not the nicest thing to do. Um, and if I, I don't remember what that, I think that stands for secure, but I don't remember. There's also make dtemp. This is what's used in temporary directory and the temporary directory context manager, similar to make stemp. Um, and all of these arguments are basically the same as what you would see in uh, those two functions up there. So these are kind of the, the low level uh, parts that power those context managers. Uh, there's also git tempter. This will show you the temporary directory that's configured on your, your operating system, or at least the first appropriate one. There's also a binary version of it. Uh, as well as the prefix, uh, the prefix of those. Uh, and then there's the deprecated functions, which is make temp. Um, so make temp is uh, basically unsafe due to race conditions. Um, so generally, actually, so, so the way make it make temp works is it gives you a file name that does not exist. 
but there is a race between receiving that file name and creating your file where someone else could swoop in and, and write there um, and basically take over that particular file name. Basically, it's a temporary file race and uh, it can present a security issue. So don't use this function uh, in general. Sometimes it can be okay, but for the most part, don't use this function. But anyway, that's the temp file module um, and the, the useful context managers in it. Hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.